I'm here with Dr. Craig Clements. He's the head of the Fire Weather Research Laboratory at San Jose State, and we're just going to be asking some questions about wildfire, fuel moisture, and the effects it has on the central coast in California. So uh, first question I have for you is just what are the main drivers of wildfire in California? Well, you know, the main drivers of wildfire and particularly the Western U.S. and let's think about California are um, it's not as easy as you would think. It's not just hot, dry, windy weather, which is a big component. It also has a lot to do with um, big or big fires have a lot to do with uh, the atmospheric conditions, the fuels, the type of fuels that are burning um, and the topography. So a number of different things go into what drives a large wildfire. Uh, obviously, hot, dry, windy weather or red flag warnings, you know, that's a big component because that helps prep the fuels and the fuel moisture. But if we don't have the fuels there, we don't have heavy fuels, I'm thinking like forests and heavy shrubs, and we don't have wind, then we may not have big fires. So there's a number of different things that drive uh, large wildfires. But I would say the number one things are dry fuels, dry weather, windy conditions, and uh, topography. Yeah, so with those dry fuels, I was just looking at the Fire Weather Research Laboratory website, and our fuel moisture data shows that some of the fuels in the Santa Cruz Mountains are at record dry levels right now. Uh, what do you think is the main thing driving the dryness of those fuels? Yeah, so the live fuel moistures, particularly chemise shrub live fuel moistures in the Santa Cruz Mountains and in the South Bay here and Central Coast are really dry because of the drought. We had record drought between January and through April, which, you know, we haven't seen that type of drying, you know, lack of rainfall ever. And so that really predisposes these plants to be dry. Now, they actually are showing new growth, which is what we expect in uh, spring, but the levels are really low. And so what that indicates is that the next month or so, probably see these plants starting to dry out even more. Yeah, definitely see the effects that drought could have on wildfire, and especially throughout this last decade. I think nine out of the 10 of the largest wildfires in the history of California have been in this last decade. Would you mostly tie that to like drought and dry fuels, or are there other factors coming into play there? Well, I think the, the fact that we have our biggest fires in the last decade or so across the state, the driving force is dry fuels, obviously, but we also have records, record breaking, um, sorry, can you repeat the, the question again? Um, basically the question is like, nine out of 10 of the largest wildfires in the history of California have happened in the last decade. What would you say is driving that trend? Yeah, the, the main driver of the trend uh, showing that we have record breaking fires in the last decade is really the drying of the fuels. We have record drying of fuels. And so that is linked to climate change and drying of the atmosphere. Uh, studies have shown that uh, arid aridity in the atmosphere is linked to drying of fuels, and that's all been uh, linked to climate change. So we can actually put climate change fingerprints all over these record-breaking fires. Yeah, very interesting. So I think that makes sense. If it gets drier, you get more evaporation, you get also some less rainfall, so then you get drier fuels. So is it almost just a guarantee that in future decades, we're going to see worse wildfire activity across California? Unfortunately, I think that's what, the, what we should plan for, is that we're going to have continuously large wildfires throughout the western U.S., not just in California. And this is linked to climate change, warming, drying conditions across the western U.S. And then kind of tying it back into the central coast, are there any specific challenges you see for Big Sur area? I know we just recently had a big fire in the middle of winter or the Santa Cruz Mountains. We had the large CZU lightning complex. Are there any kind of specific challenges that you see for the central coast when it comes to wildfire? That's a technical, that's a great question. You know, the Central Coast kind of gets, uh, doesn't get the, uh, the notoriety that it should have. The Central Coast is kind of, you know, it's not Santa Ana winds, it's not Southern California, it's not the big Northern California areas where we get huge wildfires, but there's a lot of fire risk in the Central uh, Coast. And 
part of that is due to the fuel loads. We have big forests there in the Big Sur area, and those fuels um, are a function of lack of fire, it's fire suppression over 100 years. And so you have fuel buildup, and then you have this drying issue that we've been talking about. And so as you get a lot of fuel loads, big drying, you're going to have big fires. Now, um, we've had large fires in that region the last few years, and that's, you know, been probably helpful in reducing those fuel loads, but it hasn't burned everything. And so we still have to keep, have a look out, keep an eye out on, on these areas because uh, they're at risk. You know, Central Coast is at risk for uh, wildfire. Yeah, definitely important to keep an eye out. And I know at San Jose State, we're doing a lot of very exciting and interesting things when it comes to wildfire. Is there anything you're especially excited about with the whole wildfire Inter interdisciplinary research center? Well, one of the things that's exciting is that we have our modeling system, which is a coupled fire atmosphere model that runs a very high resolution, runs on a high performance computing center here at San Jose State. And we are able to forecast the fire uh, perimeter, how it's going minute by minute and what the plume is actually doing. So we can calculate and predict smoke impacts on communities. We can calculate and predict if a pyrocumulonimbus is going to form. And so this new modeling tool is really uh, the state of the art in terms of fire prediction. And so that's the most, one of the more exciting aspects of uh, what's going on in the wildfire center here is having that tool available to fire managers across the state and the Western US. Yeah, I can definitely see that being a big part of the solution. Overall for California, what do you think will be part of the solution to the climate change and wildfire problem that we're seeing? Well, I think one of the main solutions for California and the Western U.S. in a whole is uh, introducing more prescribed fire. We need more fire on the ground, whether it's uh, manually uh, prescribed and set or if we allow uh, low intensity wildfires to continuously burn because we have a lot of fuel buildup throughout the forest across the Western U.S. and we need to reduce those fuel loads. So we have to have more fire on the ground to do that because well, we can do mechanical thinning around the roadways and such. We just can't uh, cover enough acres to make a difference in terms of reducing the threat of wildfire and impacts on these ecosystems. Yeah, that definitely makes sense then. Final question, what can people do on the individual level to reduce their risk for protecting their lives and their property? Well, one thing that individuals can do that live in like the wild and urban interface or in high fire risk zones is to maintain the vegetation and defensible space around their property. Uh, that makes it easier for firefighters to defend their homes if there was a fire in the area. It also uh, limits the available fuel to actually burn the property and potentially have uh, uh, have the house burned down. You know, their prop their uh, structures catch on fire. So managing their fuels is really what homeowners can do and in addition if there is a fire in your area be ready to evacuate have an evacuation plan with your family members and know the best way to get uh, uh, to a safe location if evacuation is called nice yeah i think you answered all my questions thank you very much dr craig clements thanks for having me